in these difficult and challenging times. Um, so since we do have a hard stop time that we're going to try to keep to, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Dave Lyons, who is going to uh, host the event from here on. I will be in the chat room ready and willing to answer any questions that anybody may have. Also, um, this event will be recorded, so anybody that doesn't want to appear on camera, uh, please just turn off your camera, and no children should appear on any recordings, just per BSA rules. Um, later on, um, as we scouters usually like to do, uh, I know we like to get together and, and talk. I know I, I get, I usually find a lot of the best information uh, in those parking lot meetings that we always tend to have. So at the end of this, um, Herb Dodds, who is our technical guru, will explain, you know, how you can still do that. We have certain breakout rooms set aside that he can put you into. So if you want to continue talking or if you hear somebody, you know, talk about something that piqued your interest, and you want to find out a little bit more, um, Herb will let you, you know, connect with them. So with that, I'm going to introduce Dave Lyons. Dave is a scout of over 45 years. He's an all around great guy. Um, he's got a fountain of knowledge and, and wisdom. He's um, he served on several national groups uh, for Cub Scout material and programs, and he's taught several courses at Philmont. So Dave, take it away. Okay, thank you, Al. It's really great to be here. Every Scout meeting should start with an opening. Openings are sometimes difficult on virtual, but I found this recording, it's four minutes. I think this would make a great opening for our meeting and for your meetings. A teacher that I had. Now I only I went I went through the seventh grade. I went to the seventh grade. I left home when I was ten years old because I was hungry. I used to. <laughs> this is true. I work in the summer. I go to school in the winter. But I had this one teacher. He was the principal of the Harrison School in Vincennes, Indiana. To me, this was the greatest teacher, a real sage of of my time. Anyhow, he had such wisdom, and we were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day, and he walked over. This little old teacher, Mr. Laswell, was his name. Mr. Laswell is. is uh, <laughs> he says, I have been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word? I, me, an individual of a committee of one pledge dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity allegiance my love and my devotion to the flag our standard O oh glory a symbol of freedom wherever she waves there's respect because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United. That means that we have all come together. States. Individual communities that have united into 48 great states. 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose, and that's love for country. And to the Republic, Republic, a state in which sovereign power is invested in representatives chosen by the people to govern. And government is the people, and it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people for which it stands. One nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation and justice, 
the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others. For all. For all. Which means, boys and girls, it's as much your country as it is mine. And now, boys and girls, let me hear you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance under God. Wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that is a prayer and that would be eliminated from schools too? Okay. So that was pretty meaningful. Uh, there's a Charlie Daniels version where he reads all those same words and says it, and he's put little video clips in for each of the phrases. If you think your your Cub Scouts would enjoy that interpretation of it better, I saw that one when it happened in 1969. So our first presenter tonight is Christine Pep, Cub Master of Pack 36 Vineland. She has maintained weekly meetings since we first started quarantine and is running very close to 100% retention. And when we had our planning meeting for this, she just, she's got a whole slideshow and everything to show you. So Christine, take it away. Thank you, David. Um, let me just get my screen share here with everybody. Okay, here I am. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I put my email address there in case anybody wants to contact me about any information on the slideshow tonight. Um, feel free to contact me. I can share all my slideshows or or uh, Google Docs with you. So um, pretty much we started um, right away doing something after we shut down. I think we skipped one week and then on our second week, we started with, this was before Zoom, be before Zoom, we would pre-record a video for our scouts. Um, and it was me in my home with my two boys who were scouts. We would do um, science videos, gardening videos. There would be about 15, 20 minutes long and I would post them on Tuesday night at six o'clock, which was our regular meeting time. So. Our scouts could stay on a routine, um, and when they completed the video, they could, you know, watch it at their leisure. When they completed it, their parent just has to post a photo of the of them actually doing the activity or the, of the completed project, and they would earn a patch. Um, and it just kind of kept them busy, kind of kept them on that Tuesday night schedule for a while until we could figure out, you know, what we were going to do. So we did a constellation one, we did a gardening one, we did um, a one foot hike video. Um, and these were all every single week. We just would put it up at six o'clock and uh, they could watch it. So they had a lot of fun with that. And we really had about like, at that point, we had like 60 to 70% of our scouts watching the video and posting pictures on our Facebook page saying, hey, I completed the video. Um, and, then, and then we would mail them out the patch. Um, so then we um, found Zoom and our first Zoom activity was a virtual camp-in um, and that was really a lot of fun. They, they had to make their best tent at home with sheets or blankets, whatever they could. Um, and we had a virtual campfire at a certain time and they all came on Zoom and we sang songs and told jokes and um, we had they uploaded their, they posted their photos of their tents at a certain time that we had someone outside scouts be the judge. And then we picked a winner and we gave them a t-shirt and a big snack basket. So it was like a really big deal for them. They really had a lot of fun with it. Um, so that was, again, just something before we really, really got into Zoom just to kind of keep ourselves busy. 
Um, we did a virtual pet, uh, pet show, which was really fun. Um, you could bring your real pet, a stuffed pet, any kind of animal you had at your house. And we gave the scouts about five to 10 minutes to show off their pets. Some of them train their pet to do tricks and some just wanted to talk about their pet or their stuffed animals. Um, so that was really fun. Now in the beginning, we were all meeting on Tuesday night as a pack, just all together, just um, a fun activity to keep us busy, to keep us active and just, just to keep them on that Tuesday night routine because we just thought that was important. We did a bingo, um, a bingo game, Scout Law Bingo, which was really super fun. Um, and by the way, if you go to myfreebingocards.com, you can get a hundred free bingo cards and you just send the bingo cards, email it to your parents. They could either print them out or you can just open them up in a separate browser and just play bingo that way. Um, and it was all free and that was really fun. So the bingo game was fun. Again, this was just a pack activity, but then we backtrack too, because sometimes we'll take these and just use them as like a smaller den activity now. Um, and then we did um, a pack 36 memory game. This was a really big hit. Our scouts really had fun with this. This was, I don't know if anybody has experience with um, Bitmoji extension that you put on your computer. It's a Chrome extension. It's really, it's really fun to use. You can build any scene that you want. So what we did was we would, uh, we had 15 slides all together and we would put the slide up on the screen, just how it is now. We would give them exactly one minute to look at everything in the scene. And then we would give them the black screen for like 10 seconds. And then we would come back on with the same screen, but something was missing. And then they had to write down the missing item that they saw was missing. And, um, we did 15 of those slides. And then when we were all finished, we backtracked to the beginning again, then we went over them together to see if they, if they could guess them all right. So that was really fun. This is just another one of our bit OG scenes. And it, it was the, it was the tiger. I think it was a tiger book. I can't see them over from the side. Yeah, that is the missing one on that one. So that was really fun. Um, the Bitmoji, it's really easy to use. You can create any scene you want. You can even embed videos into your scene or other like little um, voice clips you can put into your scene. So that's really fun. If anyone needs help setting that up, um, I, can, I can help you do that. We did um, a Would You Rather night. That was a lot of fun too. We made a PowerPoint uh, presentation for everybody. And we just, there was, we had enough slides for all the scouts to do two each. So when it came their turn, they would, they would have to read it and then answer it. And it was just kind of like a funny, fun thing for them to do. Did that. Um, we also did a skit. We also did a skit. This was um, because when we were doing our weekly activities, we would also have a virtual pack meeting at the end of the month where we would have a skit and then we would um, mail out all the all the belt loops or patches that the scouts earn. So we would send, this was our, this was our bear den, one, two, yes, five kids. So th this was our bear den um, and they, they each had their own part. We would send them their part and they would video it at home individually and then we would just piece it all together for a skit. Um, and I just put this one up here just to show you like how easy it is to piece together and it just came together really nice. And I would just realize like two minutes before the meeting that this is the wrong video for that um, scripts, <laughs> but you'll get the idea anyway. <laughs> but they all had their own. I don't know, hopefully everybody can. Can everybody hear the video? Oh, you can't hear it. Hold on, guys. 
I don't know. <laughs> Ahoy, Captain! I just heard a Can you hear me? Great lad, now can you help me walk the plank? <gasps> Captain, I just finished freezing the anchor. Great lad, now can you help me walk the plank? <gasps> Ahoy, Captain. I just finished swabbing the deck. Arr, arr, arr. Great lad, now can you help me walk the plank? <gasps> Where did everybody go? Well, D Plank, I'll have to walk you myself. So that was it. Um, that was really fun. They really had a lot of fun with that. And we actually did three other skits with our other dens. Um, and we would try to uh, put a skit up every month at our virtual pack meetings. Um, okay, then we started getting more into that. All of that took us into like June and then we, we take the summer off. Um, and then when we came back in September, we really wanted to structure our meetings more. So how we do it now is each uh, den leader plans our meetings for the month for their den. They type up plans for the month and then they get their supply bags for their scouts. Um, the parents will pick up the supply bags at their house, or they can kind of, you know, meet them somewhere to make sure their scouts have their supply bags. And then we meet every Tuesday on Zoom. We start our meeting as a pack together. We do our opening, um, and then we go out into separate rooms, and they'll have their activities with their den leader. Um, they have their bag with them with the instructions in case they miss a meeting. They can kind of catch up at home. But um, we've, we've had... Um, We've had like a lot of success with them because we give them their supplies and they have everything at home to do it. So, um, so that's, been, that's been working out good for us. Oh, let me go back. Um, this is my prize table because we always ask our scouts that to, um, to come in their full uniform, which is their hat, their shirt, and their neckerchief. Um, and every time they come in their uniform, they get a point and they can save their points up and get little prizes. Um, so I would say probably like 80% of our scouts that come do come in their uniform. So we just try to explain them because when we were having our Zoom meetings weekly, in the beginning, it was we were having some of them wanted to eat, you know, eat eat snacks during the meeting, or they might be in their bedroom, might be playing with toys during the meeting. So we just kind of really explained to them that, you know, we're treating the virtual meeting like we would our regular in-person meeting. So we want them to wear their uniform and, you know, come ready to do something fun. And um, now we're doing an outdoor pack meeting every month with some kind of fun activity. So we have our virtual meetings on Zoom and our end of the month pack meeting, which we've had two so far. So we, we've done a bicycle rodeo. That was a lot of fun. We hand out our awards and we had our bicycle rodeo, talked about bike safety. And we, and we are really fortunate because we have two large outdoor areas that we can use for activities like this. Um, so it really works out well for our pack. And then in October, we did a flashlight pumpkin hunt meet, pack meeting. Um, that was really a lot of fun. They had to find the little pumpkins with clues on them with our flashlights. And that's, and that's about it. And we, um, this is our hiking stick program. We had this going from last year, but it's really become an important tool for us this year to kind of keep our scouts active and busy. Um, so this is just something that I had typed up last year. If anybody wants a copy of this for their pack, it's, let me see if I can move this over and let's see, let's see. There we go. It's, we made um, a hiking stick program, explains, you know, about hiking and they can earn things for their hiking stick. So if anybody wants a copy of that for their pack, it really is a lot of fun. We have about 15 scouts who participate in our hiking stick program religiously. So 
it's really been a lot of fun for us to do that. And that's about it. And right now we are meeting indoors right now. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We can use three separate classrooms at the Sacred Heart High School. So our pack can split up into three separate rooms. So we can keep to the guidelines 10 and under right now. Um, so I don't know how long that's gonna hold out. If the schools decide that they're going to close again, then we'll just go back to virtual. But um, we've been really doing well with virtual since we've um, come back in September. We have uh, very good participation and Zoom has been working out really good with the rooms, so. And that's about all I have. Thank you, Christine. You're welcome. That, that was excellent. You want to turn off the share? Click off your share. There, no, there it is. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Lots of good ideas there. I missed the, the very beginning. of her presentation. But one thing that's worked excellently, Al has done this, has been also a scavenger hunt. I don't know if Christine mentioned it because I had to, to run take care of something. But this is one that we, Carol James picked up at Etsy that we shared at our round table. And this would get the kids would have, there's fun things to do, things with wheels, things with numbers, but there's things that find out what their, makes their your Cub Scouts happy have something with a face on it. See if they bring you a smiley face or something. And Al Garcia, that created this webinar, had inspired us to do it. He did a scavenger hunt and he had people find and, uh, what, how much, who had the most rolls of toilet paper in their house? Yeah, now this is with my troop with older boys and it was a blast. We had a, a really great time. This is right at, uh, Right, or at, right at the height of the toilet paper shortage. So uh, we figured, you know, let's let's have fun with this. So we would give the scouts 90 seconds to come back with whatever item we called out. So it would be hard to find items. So it'd be okay. Who could bring back the most rolls of toilet paper? And they had to be either in a package. You couldn't take the ones out of your actual bathroom. And the winning number, believe it or not, was 57 rolls. One family had 57 rolls of paper. And then we also asked them to, you know, take pictures of like, you know, who had apples, who had bananas, you know, uh, anything that might have been hard to find. It, it was a blast. You know, the scouts really enjoyed it. And then we even did a uh, talent show, which would work great for Cubs as well. And we allowed them to either pre-record it or they could perform it live. And it was really incredible, you know, all the creative things that they came up with. And we allowed leaders to participate also. So that was that was fun. Thank you, Al. It was pointed out to me, the video was by Red Skelton. And because I watched it live when it happened, I know who he is, but a lot of people, he's way before everybody. And like I said, there's also, you just Google for it on YouTube. And there's also a Charlie Daniels version with little videos in there. But right now we have Amy Pesolano, committee chair of PAC-1 in Bridgeton. Amy, it's your turn. All right. Hi, everyone. I don't have, sorry, it's a little dark in here. I'm hiding in my car for my kids because they always find me when I'm trying to do a presentation. Um, but I have a little presentation too, not quite as much as Christine, but hold on a second. Sorry. Can you see that? Okay. Um, if anyone has any questions, my email's there too. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, so let's see. Um, the very first thing that got canceled for us was our Pinewood Derby. Um, we kind of just postponed it. Um, that's not the first slide on here, but the first virtual activity we did when we, we took a break, we didn't keep going in the beginning. We weren't really sure like what we were going to do and we didn't think it was going to last as long as it did actually. Um, so then 
I guess in April, we were like, well, we should start doing something. I went to a couple round tables and got some ideas from other people and was like, yeah, there's no reason why we can't um, be doing some things virtually. So the first thing we did was um, we had a hike already planned. So we turned it into a, a virtual, not really a virtual hike, but everybody went to the same trail on their own. Um, we had one of our leaders and if someone like wave if you can't hear me my my internet's a little unstable so if it cuts out just let me know um one of the leaders uh made like um clues and painted letters on rocks and put them along the trail at parvin park um and then they were they went on the hike with their families and then they found the rocks and deciphered like the mystery message um some of the rocks did get moved. Not everyone could find all of the rocks, um, but they still had a lot of fun like looking for them. Um, so that was the first thing that we did in April. Um, and it was basically just like a virtual version of something we had already planned. Um, and then in June, um, or maybe we skipped April, maybe that was in May. Um, so then in June, we did virtual fitness day. Um, I reached out to an NFL, CFL football player from our town, um, and I asked him if he'd be willing to speak to us, and I let him know that if he wasn't able to be there on the exact day, that he could just send us the video, um, so that's what he did. He sent us a pre-recorded video, and we put that into the slideshow um, presentation, and then we had, um, let me see if I can hide all the faces, there we go. Um, we had someone who was a former American Ninja Warrior contestant um, that has a obstacle fitness gym in Glassboro. He came on live and he, what he was doing um, was offering virtual fitness classes um, like once everything shut down and my kids did some of them and they were pretty fun. Um, so we had him come on and do like some live activities and we had them working on things that met requirements like crab walk and some things like that and we recorded that um and it just recorded the presenter not like the people who were looking and then I took that and edited it together and we made a video for Facebook that had everybody um you know that had the whole presentation so people who couldn't come could see it later and I'm gonna put the link in the chat for this slideshow that I'm showing you um, because, let me get back my chat. I realized after I made it that you guys don't have this so you can't click on the links. So if you wanna open it up, um, then you can click on the links uh, and see, now I have to figure out how to get back to it. There we go. Um, so this first link is a Google slide presentation that I, you know, I used during the, the Zoom. It's going to be slow. I just wanted to show you that you, it's really easy to just pop a video into a slideshow presentation. So that's what we did with his. We did the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I had my son lead that just like we always do for PAC meetings. Um, then we did announcements and um, some shout outs to some kids who were doing like COVID challenges. And then um, his video was just like popped in, in there. No, but. I don't know if it's gonna play. Um, and so then back to this other presentation. Um, the second link is the edited version that's on our Facebook page that we shared with everybody. Um, and so then when we finally got to meet in person in July, we did our Pinewood Derby outside. Um, we probably only had like 10 kids show up um, with families. Um, so it was pretty easy to socially distance for that. And we had a drop off the night before and we waited in the cars and everything. So we knew exactly like um, how many races there were going to be. And that was all planned ahead of time. Um, and it also eliminated a lot of the waiting around that happens at Pinewood Derby while you're checking cars 
and all of that. And then we broadcast the race on Facebook Live uh, for people who didn't feel comfortable. And we also limited family. Pinewood Derby is a big event for us. Um, it was actually the first thing that got canceled because it, it was scheduled on like March 13th or something. And we weren't sure if we should have it, we shouldn't have it. So we made the decision to call it um, just because we meet in a church that has a, a big elderly population and family members and grandparents come to our Pinewood Derby. So then when we finally had it, we wanted them to be able to participate, but we wanted to keep them safe also. So that's why we did the broadcast on Facebook Live. And it went pretty well, I think. Where if we do Pinewood Derby in January, we'll probably do that again. Um, depending on the guidelines, we might try to race it inside, obviously in January, but only have leaders show up and broadcast the race live. That way we can have it like a normal schedule instead of waiting and having it outside. Um, a lot of the cars like gained weight from March to July uh, because of the heat and they didn't really run it like we expected them to. Um, so this year, this time we're going to try to keep it more like normal. Um, and then this last thing, I don't want to hide you guys faces because I feel like I need to be looking at people <laughs> to talk to them, but I don't want you to see that there either. So this is um, an interactive Google slide classroom that I made for the scouts. Uh, the plan was to have teachers show it um, like kind of like a scout talk concept. Um, but we really didn't get into the schools the way I had hoped. Um, see if I can click on it here and show you a little bit of it. The plan with this is to kind of make it like an on your own thing for the kids to click through. And um, we're thinking about using this format if we have to go virtual in the future. We, we have a, our pack is really small right now. There's probably only like 17 kids. Uh, so it's really easy to meet in person and outside and be socially distanced because some of the dens, you know, only have a couple of kids in them. Um, so we've been back to normal. Um, but if we do have to go back to virtual, um, everything in the slideshow presentation is clickable. This uh, copy of the mini mag is clickable, joining the pack. Um, I did show this at our virtual Q&A night. Huh? But then like they could click around and see some of the things that scouts do. And if you click on it, it takes you to a different slide. So it takes you down to slide 12, which is um, specific about that particular topic. Um, so there's all the things that we did and past pictures of things that we did as a pack. Um, and then when they have to find their den, um, some of these other things are clickable, like this, goes to a website. Um, some of them like this will go to a video about how to build a fire or how to set up a tent. Um, so I'm still working on this as a work in progress, but there's going to be one for each den so that they can do some of the of the things that uh, on their own, like with a video, like some of the challenges that were put out before um, when everything went virtual and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get back here to that other one. I think that's my last slide. Yep, that's it. So if anyone has any questions, just let me know at any point. All right, thank you, Amy. You know, one thing Cub Scouts always have is cheers. Maybe we're gonna try a class A, because if we yell, it won't work. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, run. Al's still in there clapping after the one. Okay. Yeah, they mentioned that they send the activity kits home. You can put together, if you got me, so the speaker view versus gallery view. I got a big bag here. It's got blocks of wood in it. got tax it's got tax it's got ribbons hey dave yeah take your virtual background off you can't really see it all righty then now you'll see my uh <laughs> my mess okay so you send home a bag of stuff as they mentioned, this one's got tax. 
it's got ribbons and it's got blocks of wood and there's some markings on the blocks of wood. And then when the, you have your meeting night, they can assemble it at home. And you get a Jacob's ladder. So I will put my email out on the chat. And I will send you the instructions for how to make a Jacob's ladder. Or you can send home all these other pieces of wood. And they can build a toolbox in your meeting. But as Christine had mentioned, you send home those kits during the week. And then when you have your meeting, they can assemble everything together. And our last presenter tonight is Jennifer from PAC 220. She's their outdoor activity chair. And she recently ran a very successful virtual camp out for PAC 220 and PAC 289. Jennifer, it's your turn. Hello, everyone. OK. Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, after following up those last two presenters, it's a hard sell for me, but I'll do my best. So here we go. Hold on a second. Let me just share my screen. All right. Good. All right. I should be presenting now. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. OK. So I am Jennifer Totora. I'm the Outdoor Activities Chair for PAC 220. Um, and first, uh, since you guys don't really know who I am, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so I'm a biologist. My background is in environmental education. And most of my career was in um, leading hiking trips and um, camping trips and things like that, um, restoration programs and scout programs professionally and that sort of thing. Um, now I'm a science writer um, and also serving as the outdoor activities chair for PAC 220. Um, so I'm gonna mostly be talking about uh, what our PAC has been doing as far as virtual programs, but specifically um, the virtual program that we just recently ran. So let's get started with that. Let's see. So just to sort of reiterate what a lot of you already know, and I think this is really important on how to make a successful virtual program, um, you should really just remember that kids are in virtual school most of the time. So you don't want to lecture at them. Um, and you want to do something hands-on and fun. I think a lot of the other presenters kind of talked about this, but I think it's really important. Um, and something that we discovered is that just letting them have time to socialize is sometimes more important than having the structured part because they don't really get to do that in school too much. Um, but it's also very important to have a structured plan and a schedule for a lot of reasons. Sometimes people don't have time to do everything so they can only jump in for part of it. So having that structured schedule is very important as well. Um, letting the parents know what materials they need is really helpful and finding out what your parents' skills and talents and careers are, are great so that then they can take on the leadership role um, is very useful. Okay, so here's the um, specific event that we just did, which was a virtual camping event. So. Um, we tried to notify the pack as early as possible. Um, we 
kind of just planned it on the fly uh, in late September. So we really only gave them a month notification. But um, as soon as we knew what it was, I put together this really rough flyer that you see here, which had almost no um, information on it, but it at least let them know when it was and that there was something that was going to be happening. Um, and then we gave them consistent reminders through Scoutbook every week. And every time we had something new to tell them, we would blast it out to them through email. Um, hey, here's the schedule. Hey, here's another flyer of something cool that's going to happen. Make sure that you come. Because um, we kind of have some issues with people attending things. So by consistently telling them, oh, don't forget it's happening. And here's something else new, like a carrot that will get them to show up. Um, I think that that's really useful. Uh, we had a clear time schedule, um, share the activities and needed materials in advance so that they would know to be prepared. And then um, here is the schedule that I put together for it. So um, some of these things were designed to be done in person um, over Zoom. I mean, not in person, but you know, over Zoom. Um, where we were face-to-face -face on Zoom doing it, where we were carving the pumpkins together. So um, that was really fun. And it was designed to be different levels where some kids that were very young were just drawing pictures and some of the older kids were using their knife skills and actually carving it themselves. Um, the scavenger hunt, which this is a, scav you mentioned scavenger hunt that you had gotten um, from the internet, this is one that I made myself. Um, we actually planned time for the kids to go on a hike with their families and then they would come back and share what they actually found. And it was like a competition to see who found the most things on the list. So then they would share what they actually collected on their walk. Um, we did fire safety demonstration and then a foil meal prep so that we would cook a meal, um, prep the meal first together, and then we would have time to actually cook the meal with our families. And then we took a break for eating dinner and then would come back for the um, spooky campfire stories and telling jokes, which was like our socialization time, which went over really well. So I think it's always good to do sort of a post-mortem afterwards, the wrap up, and some things really worked and some things didn't. So we had a planned schedule, which was really good. Some people hopped on partway through for certain activities and um, we were flexible as well. The opening didn't last nearly as long as I thought it would. So um, now I know for the future not to have as much time for that. Um, family time was great but it turns out the kids love the scavenger hunt. So now I know to um, do that again and have more time for it, maybe as a standalone activity. Um, we had different levels. The program was originally planned to be finished at nine, but it, we didn't need that much time. It was over at eight. Um, and at one point, an entire den broke away and did their own activity. And, which was fine, but I just didn't know that would happen. So um, we're planning some more virtual events for the future. So um, each month this winter, we're planning on having pack challenges. Um, in December, we're gonna have a coding challenge uh, using Hour of Code. And um, then in January, we're gonna do a bird photo challenge um, we're going to do a rock painting challenge one month and then a hiking challenge where they have to show us how many miles they hiked that month. Also in January, we're doing another virtual camping day that's going to replace our winter cabin camping. And then in February, we're going to do a virtual Pinewood Derby since we can't do that in person. And that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. That was You're very welcome. good. Yeah. Hey, for your hiking day, maybe you could take Christine's idea on the hiking staff for, for
for prizes for the people that hike the most. Yeah, I think that's great. I actually wrote that down as an idea. I think that's awesome. I'd like to talk to you about that some more. Okay. Hey, Al, why did the turkey cross the road? I don't know, Dave, why did the turkey cross the road? It was Thanksgiving and he wanted people to think he was a chicken. <laughs> And turkeys are the sloppiest eaters out in the animal world because they gobble everything up. <laughs> those, are, those are fresh off Boy's Life's list of 45 Thanksgiving jokes, Very which I good. just Googled for during the last presentation. And there's obviously 43 more just as good as those. <laughs> so that's our, do you have any interesting questions? That was the end of our formal presentations. Al's been monitoring for questions. Yes, so far I haven't seen too many come up. Um, but if anybody does have any questions, you know, feel free to type them now. Yeah, you know, I'll give you some time to type. I know I'm not a fast typer, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to, to type something in there. But um, I learned a lot, you know, tonight. I, I've got some great takeaways that I'm actually going to uh, modify and use for my troop. Um, everything from, you know, uh, the memory game. I, I think that'd be a blast to do with my troop. Mm -hmm. I think they would enjoy that as well. And, uh, you know, I love the painted rock and, and the skits and all of that. You know, I, I think those are all great activities because it plays to just about all levels of scouts. And virtual, and that these. virtual Kim's game, like she did with the missing pieces, that, that was a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how you did that, how you set that up with the, the bit emoji. That's something I'll have to talk to you about. <laughs> but that looked pretty cool. Uh, there are two events coming up. The 21st, this Saturday, is a shooting day at Pine Tree for Cub, Cubs Can Come. Uh, some Cubs from my pack showed up for the last one of the last ones of those, and they got to shoot for over an hour because there were so few people in attendance. They just said, well, you can stay here and keep shooting until somebody else shows up. And then the December 5th, the first Saturday in December, this is a good one, is a fishing day at Pine Tree. That's the one in Tabernacle. So there's there's two events. Council is doing lots, trying to do lots of different things to have us keep people active. So. Yeah, but I, I wanna thank our, our three presenters. A very, very fine job done on, on your part. Um, lots of great information and um, if anyone wants to continue chatting or if they want to talk, you know, personally with uh, Christine and Jen and Amy, um, Herb can explain, you know, how you can get into a little chat room now if you want to have like a little parking lot meeting and, you know, just ask the questions that you might be afraid to ask, you know, on camera with everybody listening. There are no dumb questions. Yeah, so ask away. Our presenters are here to help you. And, and the only thing that we want is to see everybody succeed and, and have their programs thrive even you know, during this pandemic. And hopefully we're not shut down, but it's starting to look that way. But um, we just have to prepare and, and be ready. Okay, right. so Herb, you can uh, give them the technicals. And if anybody would like to go to a breakout room, just shoot a message in the chat and I'll bump you guys over real quick. And now could I just say a quick thank you to Christine, to Jennifer and to Amy for all their help and support and for you and, and Herb and, and Dave for jumping on this. Um, and then certainly to everybody that's out there that, that is uh, running scouting programs in these very, very trying times, it always amazes me the commitment and the creativeness of, of all our, our unit leaders. It, it truly inspires me to, to continue to, to do what we do. So thank you all very much for, for what you do to, for the youth of our community. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank everybody that's out there. Any questions out there? I have, I have my favorite holiday time Scoutmaster Minute that I'd like to use to close and then as people leave. Sure. There's a strange animal. I heard this one first from my Scoutmaster. There's a strange animal to be found in especially large numbers at this time of the year around the holidays, around Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's called a guinea pig. You recognize it very easily. It will be saying something like this. 
give me a bicycle, give me a Sega, give me an electric new phone, give me a motor scooter, give me a pony. You can put in whatever toys you want. Have you ever seen any of these strange gimme pigs? Surely you haven't seen one in scouts. No scout could possibly be a gimme pig. A scout is pledged to help other people at all times. He wants to give, that's what he's thinking about. A real scout never thinks gimme. He thinks about the good he can do, the happiness he can bring to somebody else. Because as you know, he puts other people ahead of himself. He is thinking about other people, especially at this time of year. What will you give this Christmas? How much service to others? How much happiness to your family? What will you give? So thank you all. Thanks everybody that participated and everybody that showed up and had confidence that we would have something worthwhile for you. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Herb. Thank you, Christine and Amy and Jen. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night and a happy Thanksgiving and stay safe.